This is an notes for section 11 for the factor theorem. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you read the section before continuing on with these notes. Uh, so first of all, we're going to look at what the zeros of a polynomial are. Um, so if you think about it, every polynomial, uh, or every two polynomials, I should say, in terms of x, can always be rewritten as one po polynomial set equal to zero. So, for example, if I have 3x squared minus 2x um, equals 7, if that's my polynomial, I can rewrite that polynomial um, in this way right here, where I just set it equal to 0 by subtracting 7 from both sides. And I can do that for any two polynomials that are set equal to each other. Okay? Now, that helps me in terms of working with roots or zeros of a polynomial. Okay? So for a polynomial p of, a, p of x, the value of x such that p of x is equal to 0 is what we call the root or roots or the 0 or zeros of the polynomial. Okay? So what that means is um, if there's a value that I can put in to the fun in for the independent variable in the function that makes the function 0. We call that the 0 of the polynomial or the root of the polynomial. So for instance, if my, if my polynomial is 3x plus 21, I can say x equals negative 7 would be a 0 or a root of that polynomial because when I plug it in, the value of the function is 0. Okay? Well, those values graphically will always be the x-intercepts of that polynomial. Okay? And then the last kind of topic that falls into that that I want to talk about is the zero product theorem. And this is, seems like the most basic of ideas. If I have, if I'm multiplying a times b and it's equal to zero, I know one of two things. Either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. Now, the reason why we need to know the zero product theorem is if you think of, of a polynomial written in factored form, each of those factors is like a number. And if a times b is equal to 0, then either one of those factors, one of those factors must be equal to 0. So that allows us to find zeros of polynomials. <laughs>
Well, the factor theorem says the exact opposite of that, and that says that if you know what the zeros are, well, then you can find the factors as well. So we would say that x minus r is a factor of p of x if and only if p of r is equal to 0. That is, r is a 0 of the polynomial p. So for instance, if I know that a polynomial has uh, factors of 3 and 7, well, then I know x minus 3 and x minus 7 are factors of that polynomial. If I know, um, maybe I add another zero, another zero, and that zero is, is actually x equals 0, well, then that's like saying x minus 0 is a factor. One other way of writing x minus 0 would be to just to write it as x. Therefore, I could write this with the factor x. So <clears throat> if you know the zeros, you know the factors. If you know the factors, then you know the zeros. All right, so let's take a look at example two then. It says find the roots of p of x equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 20x squared by factoring. So let's begin by factoring this polynomial, and we're going to use what we know about factoring here. I can say that p of x is equal to, well, I'm going to start by factoring out an x squared out of that, because there's an x squared in each term there. So x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. x cubed divided by x squared would be x. And then 20x squared, so that would be just 20. Now you'll notice that I'm left with a, a uh, polynomial here. Uh, that is a quadratic. So I'm going to think about those factoring rules. So I'm looking for two numbers I can multiply together to get 20, and whose difference is 1. Well, if I take 4 <coughs> times a negative 5, and I take 4 plus a negative 5, this is negative 20, and this is negative 1. Therefore, I can rewrite this as x squared times x plus 4 oops, and x minus 5. I now have this in factored form. So now what we want to do is we want to find the roots or the zeros. Well, that's a fairly easy thing to do once you have it in factored form. So my zeros are x equals 0, x squared, so that would just be 0, negative 4, and a positive 5, because negative 4 would make this factor 0, and a positive 5 would make this factor 0. So let's take a look at example 3 here. It says a polynomial function p with degree 4, which will be important, and a leading coefficient of 1 is graphed below. Find the factors of p of x and use them to write a formula for p of x. Well, remember the factors are going to be the zeros. They're going to be the place where, graphically, where the, the graph of the function intersects the, the, the uh, x-axis. So I have those four points here labeled. So if those are my zeros, if that's, that's where the function um, intersects the x-axis, then I, I know the factors of that would have to be x minus r, or in, in each case, x minus each one of those zeros. So I could write this as x minus a negative 9, or x plus 9, times x minus 0, or just x. I'm going to put that out in front. And then I have x minus 8, and an x minus 15. So those would be the factors. Now, if we have a leading coefficient of 1, we said, and we also know the degree is 4. So if I were to, to multiply each one of these, you know, each of these together, notice how one of my terms would have to be x to the fourth power. In fact, the highest term I could possibly get would have to be x to the fourth power. So if I multiply this out, 
I should have the polynomial that that um, represent that that would represent that polynomial in standard form. So um, I don't have to worry about any any other uh, leading coefficients or anything like that because the leading coefficient is one. If I were to multiply those together, I would still have one. So let's go ahead and expand that polynomial. So what I'm going to do is on my calculator, I'm going to go to the expand function, so menu, algebra, expand. And then I'm going to put in each of those factors. And because, you know, some of these we can do by hand, but because we're going to have, uh, this one would take quite a while to kind of do by hand, I'm just going to use the calculator to do that. If I, if I do that, it will actually multiply that out for me and put it in standard form. So this would be the polynomial that I would be looking for in standard form. So here we have our final answer then. Uh, before doing this number four here, you might want to just pause the video and read example four on page 756 before continuing on. Uh, but it says here, find the general form of a polynomial function p whose zeros are negative four, seven halves, and five thirds. Well, we can write that. We, we, if these are our zeros, we know that the factors are x plus 4, x minus 7 halves, and x minus 5 thirds. Now, we also know that we could multiply that by any number and still have a polynomial with those same zeros. So I'm going to put a k in front of that because we want the general form. So we could have actually any number here that we could multiply that by. And these, each one of these factors could be raised to any power. So let's say to the a power, to the b power, and to the c power. So we don't know what k, a, b, or c are, but we know that it could be anything there and we would still have a polynomial with those zeros. So this would represent the general formula or the general polynomial uh, with those zeros.